Hi guys, I'm Dean and welcome back to another edition of The Inebriologist. So this week, going back to um, sort of Belgian territory now, it's one of my favourite sort of breweries really. Uh, and one of my favourite beers because it's just, it's been a consistently very good beer that I've had when I've gone back to Belgium. I've tried it on, on draft as well, it's it's very, very good. So the uh, the beer I'm going to be revealing this week is the Cuvée du Chateau and it's the uh, Castile beer range and the uh, the brewery is Brewery Van Honsbroek. This stuff is uh, fantastic. It's, it's probably probably the fondest memories of this as being one because it is one of the first sort of real Belgian beers that I've I'd ever tasted. Aside from like Leffe and stuff like that, you know, that's it's not really it is Belgian beer, but it's not really Belgian beer, you know. But when you get into the nitty gritty and actually try uh, a range of beers from from Belgium, you know, which you don't really have uh, in this country, or yeah, this this was. Um, this was one of the first ones that I tried um, outside of the the general ones. So um, I remember trying this, and it was just it was mind blowing. I think uh, for me, anyway, it was uh, uh, it was so refreshing to try something new and to know that there's a whole world of of beers in in Belgium. You know, because I think before I tried stuff like this, I just thought you've got Leffe and Hoogarden and. And that was pretty much it, of Fruly and stuff like that, you know. And but yeah, got into st trying stuff like this, and then it's gone. It's opened my world to Belgian beers. So Cuvée de Chateau is um, basically one of the sort of premium uh, beers of the Castile range. Yeah, so I forgot to mention as well. This is it's quite a strong beer. There we go. So it is 11% ABV, a 33 centiliter bottle. Probably wouldn't need more than one of these or a couple of these to drink anyway, because it is. As far as I remember, it's it's um, uh, it's quite a rich beer to drink, so you know one or two is fine to drink. But yeah, without further ado, time to uh, get into a glass and see what we have got. Yeah, and I do kind of like the the little sort of uh, bottle caps they got on there as well. The Cuvée de Chateau little bottle cap, which is quite nice. But you know you can't have a Castile beer. Um, without having the proper glassware for it. So um, yeah, so I got this glass, uh, which is the proper Castile glass. It's got the little castle on the bottom there, if you can see with the with the little windows and stuff. I think it's I think it's beautiful. So anyway, do you want to carry on boring you with the glass? Uh, time to get the beer into the glass. So uh, so here it goes. Yeah, so from the initial pour, you know, there's a nice sort of creamy, just off-white head on it. It's a very, very, very dark beer. Almost reddish-like, actually, just looking up to the light. Um, I can see in the just in the bottom of the glass there is like a red sort of tinge coming through. Um, I don't know if you can see it through there, actually. No, probably not. Looks like a really inviting beer. It's like a proper winter warmer. Yeah, as I said, uh, it looks really, really nice. Uh, so time to, time to get a bit of smell and see what we've got. Oh, yeah, that's uh, bringing back memories. Well, quite recent memories, actually. It's, uh, you know, it wasn't a long time ago since I, I tried one of these last, probably last um, November time, I think it was, October. And it's, um, you know, it's March now. So, um, but yeah, this, it's just a, it's a really good beer. Yeah, one of my favourites, I think, um, you know, because the, the complexity that you get from, just from the smell alone is, um, is fantastic. Lots of like um, raisins and um, plums and um, winter spices. Got a touch of vanilla going on in there as well. It smells quite sort of oaky and woody, uh, like it's been in a, a in a cask and it's like matured over time. But you know, it does smell um, quite sweet as well. It, uh, you know, I'm not sure if they put like sort of candied sugar in there or some sort of additional sugars, but it does smell quite sweet. And uh, at the same time, it's got that sort of Belgian. Uh, yeasty sort of bready smell to it as well amazing stuff it smells smells so good so um yeah i can't wait to dive into this so uh cheers everybody yechida it's such a such a really nice warming beer just taking from the one sip of it you know there's there's like that sort of nice alcohol warming feeling going right down it's a nice little warm embrace 
it is one of the first things you can taste on that when you taste it you can taste the alcohol but on the smell it doesn't smell that boozy at all it doesn't um, it doesn't even have that whiff of like sort of ethanol or or anything like that but on the flavor yeah you can definitely taste it so the flavors on it pretty much like what the smell would be like you know so it's got that sort of raisiny um, figgy type of um, plummy taste to it and also like the uh, like sort of winter sort of spices so you, you've got things like cinnamon nutmeg you know it, it, it it's amazing how it tastes like that. It does taste quite on the sweet sort of side as well. You know, with that sort of sweetness you got in there, I'm, I'm guessing they must have put maybe some like candied sugar or something like that in there. You know, even from the malts as well, because it's, it's got that sort of sweet, toffee, really thick sort of caramel uh, flavor going on. But it's quite surprising actually with the, um, the body on it, because it's not actually that full bodied you know it is a little bit on the thin side but saying that usually with beers if they are a bit on the thin side it tends to mean that a lot of the the sugars and stuff that were in the in the, in the beer have been converted to uh, converted to alcohol because at the end of the day you know these beers they're, they're bottle conditioned so they're still still fermenting in the bottle basically so I've had that on my shelf for quite a while now so maybe about six months uh, to nine months something like that so you know I, I keep I keep these beers on the shelf anyway you know just for because um, I, I tend to work my way through it so some beers will keep much better than others so I tend to keep them a little bit longer maybe as a result it's gone a bit thinner but to be honest the flavour is it's still there it's great yeah so the, uh, so the score I'm going to give uh, this beak uh, this this beak so the score I'm going to give this beer this week you know considering it's uh, it's well, one of my all-time favourite beers, to be honest, and it was one of the beers which was kind of like a proper gateway beer into like more sort of like proper Belgian beer territory, should we say, you know. So yeah, um, so the score I'm going to give this beer is a um, 4.5 out of 5. You know, from that score, it, it is a great, great beer. Probably, I think I'd probably give this a possibly a higher marking if it was more of a full-bodied beer, even though the flavours are spot on with this. I think when it comes to the sweetness as well I don't like beers which are too sweet but I think if it was a little a little less sweet um, I would have given it a higher marking but uh, but still four and a half is is considered by me um, you know it's a fantastic beer so yeah if you if you can get your hands on it get the um, Cuvée de Chateau by uh, Brewery Van Honsbroek fantastic beer so thanks for watching guys don't forget to subscribe for more beer videos and I shall see you very soon yeah